Guys, this is uh, I'm David, Bushcraft Dave, and I'm talking to Captain Erica. Hi. I'd like, to, I'd like to thank her for joining me on this uh, this chat. This is my very first. It's our very first uh, live stream. So, um, so let's get into it. We're talking about Alone, Alone, Season Five, Episode Ten. Um, this is the the finale, and it starts off on day forty. And on day forty, we have three people left on the show, and the episode begins with Brit. So in his segment, you can clearly see that winter is here. It's really cold and um, he's still in really good spirits. He tries fishing in the river and it's, it's really cold. He's frustrated that he can't get to the spots where he knows the, the fish are. Um, let's, okay, let's talk about that right there. Do you, do you remember that segment of, uh, of Brit opening the show? Yes. Yes. No, I always love that they use a lot of the clips from Brit to start the show because he's so like positive and stuff. And so it's he's he he like really did the camera presence good. I, I want him to do YouTube so I can oh, like, yeah. watch him. Really that would be good. awesome. Really good. <laughs> yeah. That's that's one neglected aspect of Alone, I think, or or these survival shows is just having a good attitude. Yes, yes, it's so true. Like, there's all these like hardcore fans that are like, "Gosh, these guys need to suck it up and blah 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 blah." It's like <laughs> actually they need to kind of chill out and like try yeah. to enjoy the suck, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And um, you know, with, with the fishing, it seems like some people are lucky and they get situated in a spot where there's a lot of fish, and some mm -hmm. some have a tougher time. Do you think that's the case? I think some of it's luck. And then some of it is just like basic fish, fishing knowledge. Like that's one thing that I really lack um, is fishing knowledge. And I would be like, okay, I'm at the river and I think I see a deep spot. <laughs> that's cool, let's get a fish, you know? And like, yeah. so it just kind of depends. And so Brits, like he lucked out like, or had knowledge that got yeah. him a lot of fish during the show. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, it seemed kind of like he, like he seemed really hopeless about it. Cause it's like, what do you do when it's super cold and fishing? I don't know. <laughs> Does he know? Yeah. yeah <laughs> um, so. I hear Yeah, I hear the, the fish aren't as active, you know, when it gets really, really cold. I've only fished in the mm -hmm. summertime. Uh, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, and like, you know, it is it is always disheartening if you start off doing really well and then like the fish stop coming. So you're like, what am I doing wrong? You know, I've tried so many things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I think it's great that he went out there and tried, and you have no idea how many hours he was out there trying yeah. too. I wish, I wish there was like a little, sub, like a little caption that's like, "Brit has been trying for twelve hours." <laughs> From your face. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's let's move on to the next segment. So uh, we move on to Sam. Uh, he's still in good spirits, and uh, he's been dealing with constipation, and uh, he's he's thinking of his family. Uh, and he finally had a bowel movement. He finally went, so that's 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 good for him. He was super stoked. He was really happy about that. Um, he was really concerned about having to leave the show because of, of that. Um, let's see here. So he's starting to look for firewood in preparation of winter. And yeah, that's I think that's it. What do you what do you think of of that segment of uh, Sam and his bowel movement? Oh my gosh. How crazy is it that everyone's like, Sam's got a poop. Sam's got a poop. Ah, like, <laughs> no, it was that was great. I'm so glad that I was kind of bummed because the scene. You gotta be quiet. You gotta be quiet, okay? Uh, the scene that they like said that he had pooped. It was yeah. just like kind of B-roll, and so if you weren't listening, you didn't hear that part. Oh. But so you know, I mean, I was listening because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my favorite show ever. But uh, Yes, no, super great. I I don't know what that experience would be like to have your entire like what you want to do hinging on that. Wow. <laughs> like talk about stress. Um, but yeah, no, again, so the two, so we'll continue this discussion about the positive attitude, but like, yeah, that positive attitude obviously is really, really important. Yeah. And it's cool to see, they did a lot more showing of his little projects and stuff and his shelter and things, which was good. Uh -huh. That's really cool. Okay, so let's move on. Um, we're, we move on to Larry, and uh, he's really missing his family. Uh, he goes out and looks for some birch bark to make snow goggles to protect against the glare, which is really cool. That's a nice little project. Mm -hmm. um, 
he's really missing human contact, and you could clearly see that he's dealing with uh, with some issues. Uh, it's very sad. Um, let's see here. Um, he wants to write a, a love letter for his wife, which I thought was really, really sweet. Um, let's see here. He believes, oh, when he did the show the first time and he went home, his wife told him that uh, he was like a, a, a wreck, right? He was like a complete mess. And uh, now that he's in Mongolia, he believes that it has fixed him. It seems as though he has uh, uh, started to appreciate life a little bit more. And it's uh, And uh, it seems, I, I feel bad for a lot of these guys or a lot of these contestants. Because, they really, want to for their they really want to win for their family. So when they quit, they feel so guilty. And I always wonder when they're back home, how are they dealing with that? So what, what do you think about Larry's segment? I okay. So first off, are you a Larry fan? Did you do you like Larry? I I have a respect for all of the contestants, but okay. Larry kind of scares me. Okay, that's I think that's reasonable because he's like so intense. Yeah, so I love Larry. I'm a Larry fan. I think Larry's ups and downs in both seasons, I it like is really, it's so brutal and like so honest. Yeah. I think there's a lot of value in showing that sure. um, because everybody's like experience in life, like it's really, I don't know, just, they just like, a lot of people just see the alone experience as like this one thing, this one way to do it. And it's not always what you expect. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you are like literally cursing the wind. Um, before I forget, Larry did a video with his wife um, after the uh, season, who was Larry, season two? Yes, season two, okay. So. so he did, a, and so she, talk about a forgiving woman. Like she is so sweet. Really? <laughs> and so it was really interesting to watch that video because I think, I don't know what Larry's experience was coming home after this season. But the, based on his kind of like, he gets like an emotional redemption, essentially, which is, I think, really, the way they edited it was really good because mm -hmm. they were kind of making him look like a crazy person the whole season. <laughs> um, That's true. And, and like, I think whatever he learned and he's taking away from this, I'm sure, I'm sure she's happy. I'm yeah. sure she's, like, relieved because there's, like, a lot of, like, pain and like angst and just yeah. stuff that Larry's like dealing with on this like really intense level and I don't know it was it was really cool to see that like his love not to Rachel like sometimes like the simplest things like I love you yeah. is like all you need I don't know I get all emotional about everything so I'm I know like, oh, I, that's so sweet. I <laughs> was then, I was really touched when when he did that love <laughs> and I totally forgot that after mentioning that he believes nice. Mongoli has fixed him he decides to to tap out I forgot to mention that part, but um, yeah, yeah. I was like, no, it's happening. He's gonna tap. I'm glad they showed his like project though, because like my husband had never heard of those um, sunglasses, yeah. uh -huh. and that's a really, really useful thing for someone like like I have really sensitive eyes, and I bring my sunglasses with me everywhere. Well, yeah. if I lose them, I would yeah. be screwed. Except you know, there are ways to adapt, you yeah. know, nature to help you out. So that was so, really cool. Yeah, snow blindness is a real thing. I know. I went <laughs> snowboarding without sunglasses or goggles once, and yeah, it's Whoa, a real thing. Whoa, great! <laughs> yeah, I can hurt your eyes. Um, let's see. And you know, he he mentioned he seemed very happy. A lot of people leave and they say, you know what, I'm good with this. But then later yeah. on, you know, I feel that they may have regrets. But Larry, he walked away. I think feeling really good about it. And in yes, that, in, a, in in a way, he kind of won. He got what he wanted. Um, he wanted to to become whole. I guess to to, to be fixed and you know he walked away with that so he, he yeah he won, essentially i definitely i just this this episode was so good yeah, yeah. i'm so glad that like he got that too because i don't know if another another season with him leaving on like a bad note he might just lose his mind <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know that one really i think the thing about larry that kind of scares me is he kind of reminds me of myself um Oh, maybe that's what makes people apprehensive. Because he reminds me of my husband. My husband's really fiery. And it's like, yeah. that's just how you live your life. Like, yeah. Yeah. having emotions is good. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and also, like, being alone out there, I don't know how I could handle it. Like, mm -hmm. some of the guys that quit, like, in day w or day one or day two, I, I could understand that. At first, mm -hmm. I was like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> I totally understand that. 
Yeah. No, it's like Jim that in season three that tapped out on like three days and everybody's like, I hate that guy. He was so dumb. It's like more like he really realized the truth about himself. He can't yeah. be alone, you know? Yeah, you know, I was I had a live chat on YouTube or not YouTube on Instagram a while ago and we were talking about how I wonder how the younger generation, like the the millennials, how they handle uh, being alone and being without technology, being without, you know, being able to text someone at an instance. I wonder how they would deal with it. As an older millennial, I would say it just depends on your personality. <laughs> I think there is, you know, that's a whole nother live stream. I could like talk about that mm. for so long about like kind of this concept of like the internet and like what it does to like us socially. Um, but yeah, not being connected to your community. So whether or not you're in like living in the 1800s and that's like your farmer neighbors or it's like your Facebook friends, not having that is like, it's like not human. Like to yeah. be alone is a weird thing. Like hermits aren't common, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think, I think the struggle would be real to not have, you know, like, <laughs> like to not have your, your phone or whatever. I mean, I love yeah. taking pictures of everything. I would be so irritated that I couldn't like journal or take pictures yeah. or like do what I want to do and record my experience yeah. and keep it, you know, cause it's like a treasure and they don't get to keep, I mean, they get to put it, they do this thing and they experience it, but they own, they don't have any control over what's shared. That's yeah. kind of really hard. Erica, you really should make more videos because you're very, you're very astute. You, uh, uh, more my, like obsessed. <laughs> my videos, my videos are so silly and so random. Uh, you actually have, you know, um, something really important to say. So I think you Don't definitely hair, should start making more videos. Um, let me check in <laughs> on this you. dream here real quick. Yeah, I think somebody's talking over here. Oh, really? I, I mean, yeah, I've got my phone up. It's look like uh, somebody triumph screen printing. Hey, Dave. Oh. I will... Do you know hey. this guy? Yes. Hey, guys. Dude, I'm so sorry. Ah. I can't ah. see your chats. We're not ignoring <laughs> you. Um, it's my very first time doing this, so uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm really sorry. <laughs> he says the internet's a great learning tool, but it has its social issues, and that's really, really true. I mean, like, the internet has a lot of terrible things on it and ways that you can like really get into bad habits but it's also like amazing because I live this life where I'm a, like a female bushcrafter right if yes. you want to put some labels on there it's pretty lonely <laughs> just in my local community without the internet yeah, it would be true, true. <laughs> so yeah anyway okay keep talking Erica. I'm trying to okay. figure this thing out real quick okay I think I sure yeah I just have my phone like pulled up on silent like with the um, chat but it's really slow to like refresh so but, yeah okay Teddy you're let's, eating my hair buddy let's uh, let's move on so now we are down okay. to Brit and Sam um, we move to Brit and it's day 41 and we have snow winter is officially here mm -hmm. um, he's still really happy and uh, He's glad that he switched his rafters from uh, birch wood to, to pine wood, which I guess is more um, resistant to like breaking or snapping. Yeah, in my experience in just like burning stuff and yeah. playing around in the woods, it, seem, it seems like that's the case. Yeah, um, so let's see here. Uh, he uses his sled to look for firewood and I thought that was a really cool project, making uh, the sled. Mm -hmm. They were so good about editing in actual projects in this episode. Yeah. It was yeah. so much better. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, like he did this sled in the last one, but like they showed the stuff. Yeah, and I'm uh, actually using it, right? Yes, it was so good. Let's see here. And uh, the snow, the snow is really, uh, it, it seems like they're all excited about the snow because it reveals the, the tracks in the snow mm -hmm. for hunting or for trapping. Um, I really want to ask if any of them got anything because they didn't show them getting anything, but I really yeah. want to know, like, did they actually get anything? Um, or was it just, you know, by that point, they're also exhausted. It's yeah. like, how much effort can you put into it? So then uh, we moved to Sam and uh, let's see here with Sam. Uh, <laughs> Sam, Sam is really funny. I, I like all of his jokes. Uh, he cracks me up. I, I love his, his attitude. Um, always smiling, you know? Here. Yeah, no, he's and well, and the thing is, like, sometimes people like think Sam's so goofy and that they don't take him seriously. 
but I think Sam's like the most serious business out there. He's like, I got to do this. Well, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, like he, he like uses humor to kind of like mask the, the like struggling man, like underneath yeah. that's like, I got to do this for my family yeah. or else, you know, kind of deal. So yeah, no, I, yeah. Let what me get some good Sam jokes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of his uh, his his trap? It's called the Athabaskan. At the, I don't know. I missed it. the name. I I I'm glad that I'm gonna have to like rewatch the episode just to like look that up. I thought that was great that they were showing a trap that was actually like hefty. Like yeah. that was look. It looked like the biggest kind of trap that anyone had made. I know Larry made a pretty. Someone else made a big deadfall, but like yeah. that that looked cool. I would take a lot of effort and I think he probably still need to make a million of them to be successful as yeah. you do with all traps. But yeah. I've um, never, I've that. never seen that, that trap before. Um, this one is a, uh, a primitive trap from Alaska and uh, it's really cool. He said that it could kill an animal up to 20 pounds. Um, that would oh, be yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, that'd be a nice thing. A nice fat rabbit. Jump or something. You know, I really wanted to see um, Larry's trap work. I really liked his trap. Yes. Yeah. No, I. Trapping is one of those things that it's it's hard because you can't practice it because it's not legal in a lot of places, and so you kind of just got to like study as much as you can, practice making them and all that stuff, and then pray it works in your know, survival right? scenario. So yeah, no, it's one of those things that. Um, even though those people are really, really skilled, there's um, only so much they can do to prepare on that front, you know. Erica, even in your area, like uh, trapping isn't like allowed? I don't have fine print details on like what kind of, I, I, as far as I know, there aren't, you're not allowed to trap at least mm-hmm. certain types of animals and stuff, uh-huh. um, at least certain times of year and things. Um, but, you know, we have like hunting season and things, uh-huh. but you have to like, there's like certain bow seasons and gun seasons and yeah. stuff. I think, I but you think, know, we don't have like squirrel season. Like that's a thing wait, in other parts of the country, but not here. <laughs> like really? we don't, I don't know people that go shoot squirrels. Like, Cause I, I see on YouTube, a lot of people go on a uh, varmint hunts and they, it seems yeah. like it's like open season on animals they consider v- vermin, you know? Well, that might, it might be just open here. Yeah. Mm. Honestly, I don't know the hunting laws beyond, I know deer stuff. Cause like, my family's involved in that kind of thing, but, mm-hmm. um, and I've been deer hunting before, but yeah, no, with the smaller game and stuff, I want to kind of start researching that. That's one of like my life goals is like, once Teddy gets a little older, I'd love to do some like actual rabbit hunting or something like that mm-hmm. or trapping if I'm allowed to. Uh-huh. Uh, but anyway, you- don't, I don't want to get sidetracked from alone, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Let's see here. If I'm just trying. And uh, so we go back to Brit and, um, okay. He's talking about his family, and the, you could tell this the show is coming to a conclusion because they're going back and forth between Britt and Sam, and they're talking about their families. And um, it it kind of sounds bad for me to say this, but um, for a lot of these, for a lot of the contestants, family is a driving force that motivates them to to struggle to endure this. But also missing their family so much, um, you know, propels them to to leave the show. It's it's. It's such like a weird like dichotomy kind of, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, it's so, it's so fundamentally like underlined the fact that the show's alone, but we are all driving, like all of our driving force behind us is the social aspect. Like yeah. I'm doing this for my family. I don't mm-hmm. care about myself. Like he's, you know, he said that he wouldn't be yeah. doing it if, he, if it wasn't for his family. Um, yeah, no, it's really, it's really interesting. You know it would be thought? interesting to see a bunch of young single people or something out doing it. <laughs> yes, yes. I wonder how that would how that would go. You know, yeah. if, if someone didn't have a like a family waiting for them, and and like um, Sam was talking about how he wanted a house and a car that was working. Oh, gosh, for his wife. Yeah, that, uh, you know, it's interesting. I don't, I don't want to read too far into it because there's really not that many shows to draw this from, but it does seem like folks that have those like really high needs for their family are more motivated. Like being financially like struggling is a huge motivator. I mean, obviously it's 500 K, but is 500 K that much money in life? 
you know, like for us. You know, yeah. yeah. And then for these guys to, to deal with uh, some of the, the health issues, because some of it can be really, really serious. Yeah. Well, it's like with Nicole, she was going out there. She's got MS, right? Yeah. Well, it triggered an MS attack and she had four months of recovery. Wow. That's a huge deal to go out on a yeah. show for, you know, quote unquote, it's a few days, let me see, but you know, they go out for a few weeks, but like, yeah, no, you really got to want to do this on like next level. Yeah. yeah. You know, what I thought was really touching was when uh, Britt, uh, you know, as the days are, are drawing on, he's not really that active. He's just inside his, uh, his, okay. his shelter and he's just laying there and he says that, um, He's he can handle he could handle the the ordeal he could last but he's thinking of his wife right mm -hmm. and if so his sweet. wife were to see <laughs> him struggling like she would be so heartbroken and he was heartbroken because of that mm -hmm. yeah yeah that it's like shows that these you know contestants like it depends on you know each contestant of course but like the yeah. human bond and like you know. Loving your wife is like really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, that was really sweet. And like, you know, he makes like the Christmas ornaments and stuff mm -hmm. earlier on and like, mm -hmm. that's really special. You know, and, and he's, he's, he's an accountant and he doesn't really have a ton of, uh, I guess, ex I, I'm not gonna say experience, but he, you know, he's not, he doesn't have like a bushcraft channel or mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like it's a major hobby for him, but he did pick up skills, which is good. Mm -hmm. I think he has a big backyard based on the way like they've shown his life and like what you've seen on, like you can see on social media it seems like he's kind of one of those guys that has access to nature really close because like when I was a kid like I didn't know what bushcraft was but yeah. I did bushcrafty things and I make, yeah. make a video about that actually but like yeah it's like it's just kind of part of his weekend life you know and yeah it's, it obviously paid it, off <laughs> we, we called it just playing in the dirt <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, playing your cutting stuff, burning stuff, like making forts. Making like, a all fort. bushcraft is, is yeah. like adults making forts in the woods. And it's so oh fun. <laughs> I've always thought that, that it's, it's just men playing in the dirt, making forts. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they can't call it that, so we call it bushcraft. Yes, it's I've way always, more sophisticated if you call it bushcraft. Yeah, I've yeah. always thought that. Yeah. Um, so we move on, and it's like day 56, and day 57, and then it's day 60. And the uh, the crew is called out. Actually, no, no I'm sorry. Day 50, 59, the, the, the crew is called out. And they're coming to pick up Britt. Yeah, you gotta be quiet. Can you be quiet? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> so Tip, uh, Britt taps out on uh -huh. day 59, I think. So what, what do you think of his, his So he experience? did tap 56. They left 56? Sam out there for four oh. days. I thought yeah, I messed it's up insane. On my notes. No, you did oh, not wow. mess it up. I, when I saw that, I was like, that is like its own form of torture. <laughs> yeah, so he did tap out on 56. Oh, yeah. wow. And that was kind of like interesting. And I wonder, he did, they didn't show this in the interview, but um, season one, I think, lasted 56 days, if I remember. Mm -hmm. Sam was out there, I think, for 55 days. Uh -huh. So it's like kind of symbolic, but I don't know if like he was tracking that at all or if he was just like, I'm done. But like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, no, that was, it was, was, gosh, it was so disappointing because he was so sad. Yeah, he yeah. was. But you know what, he, he probably left um, a bit healthier than most contestants, I think. He didn't. I think so, yeah. I, I mean, he definitely was thin and he, we didn't get to see any scenes of him like not in his parka, you know, at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah, true. Um, but in theory, he caught a lot more. I mean, he was killing it out there. Like yeah. he caught yeah. a lot more food. He had a lot like better space to like live in. He, you know, yeah. he had more insulation and, and like a great fire set up. And I hope mentally he feels really good about his his like experience because he he did so good. Like. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping he'll post maybe about it uh -huh. to know, like just like how much body mass, because they didn't they didn't yeah. show what didn't he lost that. or anything like that. What, what do you think of, of their shelters? Oh my gosh, I I was like, Sam, you need more insulation. <laughs> you need more like uh, it's it's amazing what they can do <laughs> with the energy that they have. Too. Yeah. But do you, do you remember? Do you remember Sam in the uh, when he was at the contestant the first time? Remember his shelter? Yeah. 
Yeah, his, his second one is obviously much, much better. <laughs> I, I could not sleep in that for one night, much less, you know, for all those weeks that he did. Yes. That was incredible that he could deal with that. And um, and the shelters, it seems like most most people who go out there, they make something that looks like, home. It looks like a cabin for the most part, right? You don't really see that many primitive looking shelters, do you? I think it just depends, like, for that environment, it was, it was obvious in the way Larry was swearing at the sun earlier on that they didn't expect it to be warm in the first part. So I think they were all just like, holy cow, it's going to snow. I got to make a cabin. Like, because, I mean, because, yeah, we were expecting maybe to see, like, wiki ups or something more like that. But um, I don't know if it was just, like, adapt. I know that Sam had mentioned, where did he I think it was on Bushcraft USA because I, I also go on that forum. Um, he had a completely separate plan, like a completely different um, plan for a shelter when he went out there. And then his, the resources that he had to work with or in his area just weren't going to work for his plan. So he just like made it up as he went along. Because his is, his is like, his was kind of tall. So it didn't seem like the heat would be like really down low yeah. and some stuff like That's that. That, that surprised me that all of their shelters are really big. But, you know, he spent, you know, 55 days in season one in a fairly small, miserable shelter. So maybe he just kind of wanted to make it bigger. You know, obviously Randy's shelter was like the bomb. Like yeah. that's what you want to be in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think my favorite shelter has to be Fowler's shelter. That one was... Amazing, yeah. Yes. And and his is insulated. Carly's yes. was also that same style. And mm -hmm. those two, actually, theirs was probably even even like you could debate that they were better than Randy's because of the way the insulation was. Yeah. Um. Definitely. I want to make something like that someday. I don't know if I'll. I need to find land to do that. But like like yeah, Fowler's or or who's. Uh, Fowler or Carly, just like whatever yeah. the resources. You know, yeah. bamboo is an amazing resource, but there's we don't have anything like that around here. Like. That that made it so he could make it that yeah, intricate and like cool, you know. So that's true. So then, uh, you know, he uh, Britt taps out and Sam is the winner. But I can't believe he was out there for four more days. And I can't. I wonder what he thinks about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what that probably was was probably they had to to fly his his wife in. You know, and, and yeah, one of it. it's flying across the world, and two, they try to like plan it around their med checks so they don't oh. get surprised. And okay. so in season yeah. three, like they're all starving to death, so they were checking on him like every three days at the end. Uh -huh. But this was only day sixty, so like they're I think after day fifty, they get more than once a week check. Uh -huh. So he they just had to like time it to surprise him is my theory. Okay. That makes um, sense. That makes sense. It's a horrible theory. They should just go get him. <laughs> Gosh, he started. <laughs> like, ah. Do you know any any like secrets or behind the scenes things about alone? Not a ton. Um, I so if you want like the public inside scoop, you got to be on the Facebook group. Are you in the Facebook group? No, I'm not. Okay, so you got <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll send you the link. So there's an alone show series Facebook group, and it's like really well moderated, so it's not full of a bunch of haters, which is really nice because yeah. it's a lot to sift through when you have to read through all the hater stuff. Um, but the producers recently posted like a mini interview um, mm -hmm. in that group. And it, that's where I learned about the 50 day like medical check thing. Um, so you can ask some questions. They're still like really like reserved about it. Yeah. And I actually work with Dave McIntyre. So winter season two on his blog. Wait, that's, that's, he's on YouTube, right? Yes. Uh, Cole, Cole Hain. Yes. Yeah. yes. I, yeah. watched, I watched his, uh, his YouTube for a really long time. Yes, no, his YouTube is super cool. And so he has a website and like, I, I've i got like a little alone show section on it cause like I'm obsessed with the show. <laughs> and I haven't posted a lot because of a lot of personal stuff. Yeah. And he's also been super involved. He's, his kids like had babies and he's kind of like watching them and stuff. So like, we both kind of been checked out of it. But my plan and goal is to post really regularly about some of the inside scoop stuff. Yeah. Um, nice. But yeah, mostly like my knowledge is just I'm obsessive and I check all the forms. I check like Reddit and Facebook and Bushcraft USA and I look on YouTube and my yeah. my favorite chant or uh, forum is Bushcraft USA. It's such a good forum. Yeah. I wish I would have discovered like I don't like I don't wish that I 
in some ways, because I had a nice time being a beggar head, but in some ways I wish I would have known about that one earlier because yeah. when I had a bunch of time to read it, because <laughs> now I don't have as much time. You know, it's crazy. I, I, I post up occasionally like my little projects, like I like to make leather mm -hmm. projects mm -hmm. and there's so many people there with so much information and they're just so eager to share their information. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. No, it's all, it's like, instead of cranky old dudes, it's like nice old dudes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they do contests, like giveaways all the time, all the mm -hmm. time. It's yeah, like, it's, I, I think they have a, a separate form <sighs> just, just for giveaways. Mm -hmm. and no, the Bushcraft USA is great. I think it's so cool. Like I'll, I'll post in like I, I've won a couple, so like I, I'm not greedy, so I don't enter all of them. <laughs> but I'll post up. I'll say you know you, you, it's you guys are awesome, so amazing. I actually did a trade um, recently. Let me see here. Um, I posted up this thing here. So this is my um, mm -hmm. canteen uh, carrier, and mm -hmm. uh, I posted it up on Bushcraft USA, and I mentioned that um, I'm looking to buy some more tools to to finish it, mm -hmm. and then a number. PM'd me and said, "Hey, I have some tools. Do you have anything to trade?" And I said, That's "So cool." And I sent him like a, a knife, and then he sent me like a hundred dollars worth of tools. And you know, that's said, the cool part about the like the internet bushcraft community is Bushcraft USA is like that, and Blade Forums is like that. Just kind of depending on who you, you're interacting with, but like people generally want to spread the love, and it, yeah. it's it's pretty cool. Like every time I send a box, because I used to do a lot of wheeling and dealing and selling knives and stuff, yeah, and, like getting new ones. I would always send a lot more crap than like I, because I wanted to share it, and everybody I think is like that. They just want people to, to enjoy nature. <laughs> it's like it's like passing it forward, you know. Yeah. 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 yeah I've 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 won a couple of contests, and and I've I've had a couple of different giveaways on my channel, and I know you you post you do a lot of giveaways on your channel too, and it's mm -hmm. it's really fun just just spreading the love, you know. <sighs> Yeah, like I like I need to do more videos so that I can do more giveaway videos because I love doing giveaway videos. It's so fun. Yeah. Um, so, do you have any other thoughts about Sam? Uh, so I think Sam is deserves the win. I as much as I was cheering for Brick, I was cheering for Maul, but like I, I think it's amazing how far those two just like we, it out. <laughs> from the beginning of the show, who was your your favorite, and who who did you think was going to win? Okay, favorite Carly. I am a oh. huge Carly fan. I think she's amazing. I think so sweet. there's a lot of amazing, sweet, hidden, hardcore stuff about her. Um, anyway, I've always been a Carly fan from the beginning of season three. Yeah. Um, so I had her slated to win in my head, but I actually posted. I thought Dave. I thought Dave would ultimately take it because I saw the preview with her hand with the hook. If I had mm. not seen it, I would have been like, Carly's gonna win. Duh. Like she's the best. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I thought Dave would take it. Um, but my next three were Britt, Sam, and Larry. So, wow, you yeah. nailed it. Well, the, the latter part, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, I, I mean, thought, I, I thought Dave was going to win because he was so close last time. Yeah, um, we knew that he could deal with the uh, the isolation, mm -hmm. with the the low calories and and everything. And I was I was surprised that he tapped out. Were, were you surprised? I wasn't surprised that he tapped based on the footage that we saw. Um, I think Dave totally is the guy that was out there and enjoying it 100%. Like, that guy is crazy. Yeah. He yeah. loves to do that. Like, he's one of those people that can really thrive. Like, he's like, not like lone wolf, but he's he's yeah. used to this alone type thing. Um, so, yeah, I think his tap out was disappointing, but he... I think there's a lot of trauma associated with like starving to death and like people are like, ah, oh, like they just like brushed off, but there's a lot like his kind of what happened to him in season three, how he essentially got anorexia is like, it's like a four, like he had a mental illness. He did not understand what was going on. And so that trauma, I think he went all out for food. I think he did everything that he wanted it to and could do. And that he just didn't want, like, the way he's, you know, he said that he didn't want to starve to death and, like, yeah. have it be really negative. And I can kind of get that, like, there's, like, trauma there. Yeah. And so I was surprised and sad, but also, like, kind of forgiving of it because of that. I'm like, yeah. okay, like, I know you're just tapping because you're hungry, but, like, yeah. okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're totally right. He was the, one of the few people who seemed like he was having a ton of fun out there, just trying different yes. things. He and that's not fake. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was scouting, you know, the, the hills for, for a year. 
And then he made that deer blind that he climbed up. I was really surprised he made that and he climbed up. Oh my gosh, he's crazy. So tired and weak. Yes. Yeah. yeah, well, and he's so strong. Like, if you yeah. think about it, Cameron, the baby's coming to you. Okay. Um, yeah, if you think about, like, the cow, like, the start for, like, a couple weeks and then climb a tree. Like, yeah. for, I don't for, know. He's for amazing. Me, I can't even drive if I haven't had books yet. You yes. Know? Yes. And he's starving and he's climbing up a tree. Yeah. How long have you how long have you been like without food before? A day. That's it. One day. Okay. So I've done five days. No way. When you are hungry, it like everything is so hard. Like, I don't know. So it, doing it for them, I don't know. I, I thought it was amazing and cool. So yeah, for sure. And he had success with the uh, with the bow and arrow too, huh? Yeah, he, he was one of the ones that, you know, talk about, like, actually coming in with some amazing skills. The, some of those bow shots were really cool. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how many he missed because they just were showing him nailing it. Like, yeah. but talk about, like, actual legit skills. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was really impressive. I think, I think Britt, he got close too, didn't he? Britt got super close. You know, I, I don't know if he was just apprehensive about using the last bit of his arrows or if he, like, wasn't hungry enough yet or what or mm – -hmm. but – for someone who maybe says that he doesn't have as much skills, I think Britt is a lot more talented than he says he is. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, let me see here. Do you have any other thoughts on, on the show? I wish it was like two hours long, like every day for like a year, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it was a really great, thank goodness. I think it was a really great episode to end this season because I get really ragey on some of the editing that they do. And, um, you know, I know they've got a lot of on their plate and a lot of footage to work with and stuff like that. And so, and then, you know, the History Channel has like 10 billion commercials, which is yeah. its own thing. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, it was awesome. And I cannot wait till next season. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start a petition, Captain Erica. And I, 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 I want you to go on the show. Oh my gosh, I, I'm a, I gotta I'm wait gonna, until my baby's a little bit older. <laughs> oh, that's true. Okay, okay. Yeah. You have like what, a year? I'll give you a year. And then oh. I'm, I'm going onto the Becker forum and I'm going to post up the petition. Would, would you do it? Like, let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say Terry was a bit older. Let's say he's like five years if old. I could do, okay, so if Teddy was like a lot older, you oh. know, like in elementary school, okay. maybe. Yeah. If I was single and didn't have a baby, I would have already applied like 20,000 times. Like <laughs> <laughs> I would have been in it, in it. But I think just the timing of life and everything yeah. um, has, it's not my favorite, but maybe like, you know, season 15, I can, I, can I don't know. That. Like, I think it'd be so cool. I would have to gain a lot of weight and I think I need more practice with the alone part. Yeah. Um, I, I've done just a couple things by myself for like a night, you know, I haven't, I haven't done anything long-term alone. And I think that's a really important like part of practicing. Yeah, no, for sure. I think I've only, I've only done like an overnighter in a um, kind of like a, like a, a campground, but there was, there were like a few other people there, but I've never truly been completely alone in the woods for an overnight. I've done it. I've done it one night. I did. I slept in a debris hut, uh, made out of ferns, by myself. And I was going to be with a friend, but he ended up going and sleeping in his car down the road because <laughs> his shelter wasn't. Yeah, that that's like he. We were both like working on shelters to like do for mm. a Becker head contest. Yeah. But yeah, so I wasn't like technically alone in the sense that there was someone like down the road. But um. it's it's cool. It's it it was a little chilly. Cause I didn't have like a sleeping bag or anything. Um, but yeah, it was a good experience. We have Brosa Russell and Sneaker Rooney in the house. Oh, hi guys. You're, we're, you're still live Sneaker Rooney. We just like did all the discussion already, but, um, yes, hi. Do have, <laughs> <laughs> well, do you guys have any questions for, for Captain Erica here? All right, cool. I, I really like Brosef's channel. Do you, do you follow Brosef? I don't. Am I going to have to check this guy out? Should you I have to thing? check out Brosif and Sneaker Rooney as well, and Triumph. Really cool channels. Okay. Uh, Brosif does a lot of cooking. He, he's always making me hungry. I can't watch his Instagram, or I can't I can't visit his Instagram if I'm hungry. Is he like scrambled dough? He always has like these delicious meals all the time. Yes. I'm like, oh, I'm so yes. jealous. Yes, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I like scrambled dough too. I mean, 
I would like to see, okay, who would you like to see on a loan from the, like the YouTube community? Ooh, uh, I hadn't thought about it. Well. Scramble uh, those, I, I'd love to see him. I think he would have a really interesting camera presence too. Oh, I would yeah. be. I would love to, you know, I know that Joe's already been on the show. I'd love to see Joe again. That would be cool. He has yeah. so much more like camera skills now. Yeah. Um, you know, and like me, maybe my self-reliance would be really cool. Cause like he, I don't know. He's just like, what, what's the word? Wait, native survival? He doesn't really do survival as much as he does like homesteady, cabiny. Uh -huh. You know, oh, like that guy. Things, oh, wait, wait, you're talking but... about the guy that makes like all primitive stuff with his hands. Yeah, so he built like the log cabin from scratch. He okay. he's hung out with Joe before. Um, he does a lot of canoeing. He's up in Canada somewhere. He's like he's like independently wealthy. He's like this good-looking old guy that like has like this amazing perfect life. Where okay. I'm joking because like I don't know what his life is like, but he has like a really good online presence and okay. like does cool stuff so what? that would be kind of it would be cool to see him do it what's his channel what's his channel again? it's called my self-reliance oh yeah yeah okay i follow yeah. him yeah, yeah he's, cool. he's, it's a pretty big one so um what about you know everybody what? go ahead no no, no go ahead. i would say everybody wants to rival lily to do it and she's done some videos about it um i like mixed feelings i don't it doesn't i don't I don't know if she'd do it the long haul she doesn't mm -hmm. seem really like that committed to it um the bushcraft because she's more survival than Bushcraft. Yeah. I think bushcraft is like really, like it's a big word that encompasses a lot of hobbies, but at the same time, like bushcraft and primitive skills, like you kind of got to be this like really weird nerd nature person, introverted, whatever, to <laughs> to like doing it alone. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, what do you think of uh, Far North Survival? Are you watch Far North Survival. That's rings a bell, but for some reason He's, I'm not. He lives in Alaska and, uh, Oh, anyone who lives in Alaska, I'm already like, you can do it. Yeah. He's really good. I think yeah. he's going to do well on the show. Um, I'm looking him up now. Rosef and Sneaker Rooney and Triumph, who do you who do you think would be good for the, the show alone? Um, yeah, I'd love to see what they say. I've got to, oh yeah, he, wow. i got to oh. follow this guy. Yeah. Oh man, his beard, his beard speaks like, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> he's really legit. He's really legit. Yeah. There's also this guy from from Russia, uh, Survival Russia. I think. Oh, Survival Russia! He, yeah. I wonder. I don't know about his personality and like how he would do alone, but it would be cool. Like he he would be totally cool with the suck and the nature and like hanging out, doing whatever. Like he, yeah. Actually, I really like his channel a lot. If they ever do alone in Hawaii, I'm gonna sign up. But if it's, <laughs> if what it's about true? the bugs though? The oh, bugs okay. in like tropical environments. I've never been. That's like the one environment I haven't been in is tropical. Like I don't know what it'd be like. You know, you know those shows, uh, Naked and Afraid. Yes, I've watched like a couple episodes, but I'm like, hey. It's it's <laughs> so unfair for these people to go out there completely nude and at the mercy of like millions and millions of bugs. I think that's so like. It's not, it's not fair. They should give them like some type of repellent at least, I think. I think that indicates like to me that that wouldn't be a show for me because it's just, it's too much like shock and awe, you know, like that's not the people that with personalities that are okay with shock and awe typically aren't the alone show crowd. Like yeah. that's maybe that's being judgmental or something, <laughs> <laughs> um, being, but there's this very clicky. Yeah, Honestly. yeah, but I don't know. You know, another thing with like the I don't know the folks that do naked and afraid. They can like suffer through being naked because they know it's going to end. Where alone, you just you just gonna be naked for like three months. I don't know. You know, like I think that makes it different. So I'm looking I, up these guys right now to to follow I wanted, them. To, I wanted to ask you, um, what. What skill do you think is like the most important for for like to survive like on alone? Um, being able to accept who you are, because when you're out there, you are all you got. Like, yeah. if we want to talk like bushcraft skills, though, um, well, season one, making fire in the rain was like a yeah. huge challenge like a, like half the guys were gone in like a week because of being cold or wet or like whatever so like there's like a 
yeah. Hmm, was, was Mitch from Native Survival on that show on, on season he one? He was, yeah. He was one yeah. of the guys that lasted a long time. Yeah, and he's the one that used a pine pitch, right? To, to uh, yes. an accelerator. Yeah, he and he also did like fire feather sticks and stuff too. Yeah. I, I know it's funny. When, when Fowler won, it made me realize that um, homesteading is a really good um, background to have on these shows because, yeah. because you're really, that's what they're doing, right? They're out there for, for 50, 60 days. They're making a homestead. Yes. And you got to be creative with it. You got to be like, okay, I got some sticks and some rocks. I'm going to make a house. You know, like yeah. there's this element of bushcraft that's really cool, which is creativity. Yeah. Um, and and in, like being okay with failure is another big thing about alone. Like sometimes you make stuff and it's crap and it doesn't work. <laughs> and like like when Sam made that like gill net and it was like it wasn't falling into the river and he's like, oh, this is so dumb. Like that. <laughs> yeah. You kind of just got to be okay with that. But you have to be willing to try. So I don't know. There's a lot of I think alone is mostly in your head, um, but there is some elements of like making a zillion fires and knowing yeah. what shelters to build and understanding like like basic how nature works is really important. <laughs> what's what's your favorite bushcraft project that you've seen on alive or on alone? Mm, oh, out of all the seasons? Yeah, all the seasons. What's your favorite bushcraft project? Lucas's guitar was pretty cool. That was dope. I okay, no, I like his canoe because it worked. Canoe, like that that's, was, that's what I was gonna vote for. Canoe. <laughs> yeah, like Lucas was amazing. He was he's definitely one of the best contestants. Like I that you know, guy he's one not, of my favorites. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, no, he's Lucas was pretty rad. And he, and he was another guy that was really emotionally raw and like just cried and did all that stuff and like, oh he's such a sissy. No, he's amazing. He yeah. can be with himself and be yeah. okay with it, you know? Yeah. And uh, it seemed like it seemed like you came from a really loving family too. Mm -hmm. so yeah, having awesome. the family support has got to be good. Yeah, he's he's one of my favorites because um, during the first couple of seasons, I felt like people went really primitive, or they they their shelters were really like just they didn't put a lot of not not that they didn't put a lot of effort, but it's pretty basic and simple. But Lucas, uh, Luke, wait, I forget his name. What is it? Mm -hmm. So it's he. They said Lucas on the show. I don't know if he goes by Luke or not, but yeah. He was the first one who wanted to make like a serious legit cabin. Um, he cut down like half the forest. <laughs> yeah, and, and then everyone was like surviving out of like a tarp shelter, but he actually wanted mm -hmm. to make a, a cabin. He made a guitar. He wanted to make a mm -hmm. fireplace. He made a boat. I I really enjoyed watching him on the show. He really tried to make things. Yeah, so I want to talk about that a little bit. So, Vancouver Island, Pacific Northwest. I think a lot of people like really underestimate the rain thing. Cause I live in Oregon. So like it rains all the bloody time in the winter and you just kind of get depression and then you get out of it in the summer and then you get depressed again. Like, <laughs> but um, there's this like in the bushcrafty type community, there's a lot of hammock camping. There's a lot of tarp camping and stuff like that because that's really all you need in a lot of places. But like yeah. Lucas somehow like understood that being under a tarp in the open when it's that wet, cause it's not just wet coming down on you. It's like, it's, kind of it's not humid humid but it's like a it's like it soaks into your soul wet yeah, yeah. and he didn't want to be like that so yeah. i think he just i think he got it and he was really ambitious and he had something to prove like he talked about it in the early season like he had something kind of to prove and i think vancouver island like beating him down was like part of his experience of like why he tapped and why he felt fulfilled that he kind of like overcame that yeah. too because he had to give up on the cabin and just make yeah. just make that cool year, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I, I was really hoping that he would do a redemption. Yeah, you know, personality-wise, it's like Callie. So Callie was another one a lot of people wanted. Lucas and Callie, I kind of grouped together because they're like the more like hippy-dippy type, but like, in a, and I mean that in a nice way. Yeah, like, yeah. they remind me of people that would come from the town I am in because <laughs> I live in Eugene, or, well, I used to live in Eugene. So, um, like, because that experience is really traumatic and they don't have anything to prove. They're not out there to like win it in the same, like in the money sense. Right. Yeah. They're so not working like, on their brand. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think like Lucas had probably the need to do that. Like if you, do you follow him on Instagram? 
No, I him. Yeah, yeah. So Lucas is like out in Arizona building a tiny house. Like he hangs out in Hawaii sometimes. Like he's like fulfilled in his own way. I don't think he needed to like prove anything. Uh -huh. But who knows? Like who knows? Because he was also he was like a consultant for that new show Castaways, which I have not seen. I heard. I heard um, about that show. I really want to watch it. Is yeah. It so he was working on that too. So I don't know what he was up to. I need to follow him. I I, I like I said. I, he's one of my favorite contestants on on the show. I've got all their social media stuff on my blog. So, oh. You know, yeah. you know what? That's. I remember. I was really excited about the new season, and you made a post about it on Instagram and you you mentioned your, your website. So that's what totally reminded me of like inviting you to do this because I wanted to do this early on, but I was just too lazy to, to do it. <laughs> and then it's the show's it's over now and I'm like, oh I right. should do a recap. And I'm like, I have to get Captain Erica to do it. <laughs> no, I'm obsessed with the show and like that's one thing that history really fails on is like kind of like cultivating fandom and having access to their social media is like a huge part of like stalking your favorite celebrities on the internet so i just was yeah. like well i will i will do that for the fans <laughs> you know what? next next season you should do this you should you should host a, a recap show for sure <sighs> that would be fun yeah no i would i would be down and then hopefully i'll be doing more videos like i really like i know i haven't posted anything and i've been saying that i'm gonna post things but i really do intend on posting soon yeah <laughs> I think Teddy and I are going to do a camp out maybe in the backyard because we have a yard now. Yeah. That's a huge thing is I lived in an apartment and it was so hard to like get out and do stuff. And now we have a new place with a yard and that's going to really change what I can do. So. I like I like all of your uh, posts about uh, flowers and roses. I like them. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I love gardening is, you know, so homesteading gardening is like my jam. So, yeah. Yeah, recently we just got a, a blueberry bush from Home Depot, and that thing is producing berries like crazy. I gotta make some jam or some pie. Ooh, I have a really good cream cheese recipe that I can't eat anymore because we don't eat dairy, but uh -huh. I should send that to you. It's like oh. a cream cheese layer and then a huckleberry or blueberry layer. Ooh. It's good. It's that very good. Dope. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Okay, let's let's uh, let's see what knife you would bring on alone. Oh, okay. I could not pick one. I'm sorry. I have to. <laughs> but I'll talk about both. Okay. And maybe like there's like, yeah. So do you want to go first or do you want to no, go no, first? No, no, you go first. You go first. Okay. So I have the BK-16. I had a feeling you were going to pick that one. <laughs> and the Bark River Aurora. So nice. Aurora is... Uh, so it depends on where we're going, I think is part of what I would choose. I would not choose the BK-16 in the Vancouver Island environment, I think, because, holy cow, I have to keep oil on this thing. It is rusts. It, is it blue? <laughs> it looks like it's blued. Or... It is. It is. So I had my, so this BK-16 is very special. It's blued. It's got a little bit of oil on it right now, so that's why it looks shiny. Um, Coil Outdoors is his uh internet name uh -huh. instagram name he blued it for me nice. and sharpened it and made it all pretty and so yeah this is my special i traded him a bk15 for it so nice. yeah because i've made an of a loan show video like forever ago saying oh, that yeah. i would bring a bk16 and i didn't have one at the time and so like this was part of that i was like i have to get a 16 like that's cool. the knife i would want and so uh -huh. and then i've got um edc kydex on it, so I've got the lime green. I actually, I actually traded Alan from EDC Kydex a uh, an axe for some of his Kydex work. So he's actually making me a, a sheath for the the BK9. I'm so excited. He's so it's good. He's like a really it's like high quality stuff, and like he's yeah no he's super red. So you'll be very happy, I'm sure. But yeah, he he made me this one with the green in it because I love green. But if I had a, like a really wet environment, or I, I might pick this one no matter what, but um, have you ever used an Aurora before? No, uh, it looks like a really nice tool. It is the sliciest knife ever. Oh my gosh. This, so it, this is a, just like a nice convex. It's like a uh, CPM 3V steel. Oh, wow. So it's Fancy. sharp. Like it's so, it's so good. It's got like, you know, kind of a patina going on on here. Uh -huh. Just from like random stuff. It doesn't rust as easily as like the 1095 like this, yeah. uh, which is good. I like the handle so much on the the, the Beckers. So like I, 
like the handle is amazing on this one, but yeah. I really like, like I've talked about this before, I really like this extra like little swoop right here because when you're tired, I just, oh, I don't, I would yeah. hate to like cut myself when I'm all exhausted on alone. So. I still, I think I remember, didn't you cut yourself once and you posted up some pictures on, on the Becca form? Maybe more than once, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I almost cut my finger off with a VK9, and so I have a bunch of scar tissue on my finger from that. I had to get stitches for that one. And then I cut oh, myself I on the I side of my hand with a VK7. Uh, it, it slipped out of a sheet and, like, cut me, and then I just glued that one back together. And then I cut myself with a Mora, wow. um, just camping. And so I just duct taped that one shut. And that one, you can see there's a little scar, but it's not a big deal. But, yeah, the VK9 one was bad. <laughs> That's, that's funny because when I was stripping my BK9, it, it actually bit me. And they the say last... that it's more bonded to you that way. Oh, okay. We we bonded. We connected <laughs> thoroughly. Uh, it's kind of weird. Like for for about six or seven years, I was really good. I I didn't cut myself at all. But then within the last week, I cut myself three times. Yeah. No. You and it's like it happens. I don't want to say it happens so easy because it doesn't. I mean, if you're practicing knife safety, it won't. But like. When it, so if you're talking about uh, the context of alone, it's amazing. You should try fasting sometimes. It's amazing how stupid you get when you're starving. Like, so practicing with your knife all the time is so critical because you it has to be like instinct to be safe with it. Um, and so because I've like been cut many times, <laughs> um, I, I tend because I've, I've cut myself with kitchen knives and everything too. Uh, you know, because I have Ethan Becker's kitchen knives. Um, they have also bit me, but I, yeah, it's just so important to to practice because it's yeah, getting bit would for, suck for sure. What, what do you think is a, a really good tip when it comes to knife safety? So I'm actually working on kind of. I've been thinking about this a lot because I have a kid and I really want to teach him how to use knives like right away. I mean, I know he's like 11 months old, but like soon he will be old enough to have a knife, and so I think. Just, if, even if you don't know like knife safety rules, just always cut away from your body. Like I know when you start carving, so Sam had mentioned this, like he was carving towards his body on when he was doing his, um, his cup and everything. When you have the skills and you know about how to do that, you can do that. But if you're like a novice knife user, just cut away from your body. Yeah. However you gotta do that, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> I, I, whenever I'm, I'm chopping or I'm cutting, I always think, okay, what's the worst case scenario? If I slip yes. or if this thing flies, where is it going? So then yes. I just remove that angle or change the angle so that doesn't happen. That's a, probably and, my number and one. Don't be afraid to use a little stick to hold a, like hold something if you're batoning. Like, don't, don't risk it. <laughs> I've seen people do that all the time. They'll hold a log and then they'll take an ax and they'll just move their hand at the last second. I'm like, why even do that? Why bother? Why take That's how I cut myself with the BK9. Like, really? I was being stupid and like I like I was holding a piece of wood and I just like I wasn't even going that fast, but it was super sharp. I like yeah. just it just went straight down onto my finger. Uh, my finger was just like bleh and it was like blood. <laughs> and I'm like, uh you that know, pretty you much hit my bone. <laughs> okay, at least you were actually using your knife when you got cut. The most embarrassing cut is when you're pulling the knife out and you cut yourself, even before using that's true. it. That's the most that's embarrassing. True. That's happened to me yeah. a couple of times. That's how I felt with the BK7 when it slipped out of the sheath. I'm like, uh -huh. really? I haven't even used this thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I wanted to show you guys what, um, initially I would have brought like this. This is an SC6, uh, so it's it's basically the counterpart for the Becker BK7. That, um, those handles actually look reasonably comfortable. I don't really like SCs a lot, if they're the square handles, but those ones yeah. look better. These are like aftermarket uh, scales that I traded yeah. for. So ah. they're, really, really comfortable. they're made out of G10. So uh -huh. initially I would bring something like this, but then um, seeing all the carving that they do in the show, all the projects that they make, I mm -hmm. and the fact that they bring a saw and an ax usually, mm -hmm. I decided I would probably bring a smaller knife, uh, like a, a carving knife. I, I would agree with that. I would even go smaller on mine if I had a smaller one to choose from. Yeah. Yeah, like so a, a Mora would be perfect, right? Uh -huh. But I have I have this knife here. Um, oh, this is a, a that's custom, cool. A custom knife from a, a friend uh -huh. of mine who lives in uh, California. It's uh -huh. it looks kind of like um, a, a Puko kind of I think, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's, but I'm, yeah. That's awesome. I'm kind of worried about the 
what is it the guard there's no really no no guard so yeah but if you've got like a really good hand swell like on the scale so that you've got a good grip like that helps like i noticed the pukos and things they usually like have like fatter handles so that when you're like gripping it your fingers can't slide forward like if it's like because like this handle is a little bit more slim so there's more but it, fortunately it has like a curve right here but it seems like those pukos and stuff with those big fat handles like you're you just got to hold it yeah. and that helps i don't know I don't know anything. I'm just talking. Yeah. No, that's that's true. That's very true. Um, let's see here. Okay, how long have we been on this thing for now? We've been going for about an hour. So. Oh wow! Do you have? Are you guys do, you, do you have to run? Do you have to get back? To no, you? I'm good. I I should probably get off here soon though, because the baby needs to go to sleep. Okay. Okay. So let's. I guess let's do final thoughts on on the okay. show. And um, yeah. So yeah. go ahead. Go go first. What are your final thoughts? So final thoughts would be, I think with the exception of the first few tab outs where like Nicole had the MS tech and like things that can't be controlled, like Carly's like hand thing and how, cause she talked about how she, even if she had a Leatherman, she wouldn't be able to get that hook out. So like if the, it always feels like the playing field is like uneven when things like that happen. But I think this season was in the end redemption and I, I'm so glad that a second place winner won this season because it, I, I don't know, just something about yeah. being second place and then getting a chance to win is really awesome. I, I really hope that Sam has like an amazing house now and a nice yeah. car and all those things that you know he wanted for his family. For sure. I hope that his kiddos, you know, were happy and stuff. Like, yeah, I just I I I love the Alone Show community and. Yeah. Anyway, that's how I, I can't wait for. I cannot wait for next season. And there's conspiracy theories going around on where it's at, but I haven't confirmed anything yet. What What are some possibilities? Can you give me that? So um, there was a rumor. Go. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go to the forum really quick. Mm -hmm. There was a rumor that it was gonna be in Canada, but mm -hmm. it was totally a rumor. So mm -hmm. I, I I like to try to confirm things. So. I was I was in Banff, Alberta, a couple of. Oh, weeks. your pictures were amazing. Oh, dang. I was so shocked when I got to those lakes, and it actually looked like what I saw on Instagram. I was like, oh my god, it really does look. Yeah, like, yeah. no filter. Hashtag no yeah, filter. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that that area is so freaking beautiful. Um, yeah. But there's a ton of mosquitoes. Yes, and that's the thing that happens, you know, in like the Pacific Northwest is like the 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 water, like it's just it just brings in all the skiers. I I actually so. went to visit that area. I want to go to uh, Brookings. Is it called Brookings? Uh huh. It's in that's that's in Oregon, right? Brookings. Yeah, that's like on the coast, I think. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I want to check that out. I've seen some really cool videos of that area. Brookings, Oregon. I'm just gonna Google it really quick because like. Yeah, Curry County. So yeah, that's over. That's over by the beach. You know, the Oregon coast. So like, it's these. They choose these like really beautiful places. And Canada is one of those other beautiful places. It's like the more beautiful it is, it's almost like the more brutal it is. That, yeah. With the exception of like the desert. But like, <laughs> yeah, there's this, nature be crazy. Are you tired? Okay. You want to have a bite? Oh, that's uh, a nice one for you. This is, this is his mama. This is his mama. Okay, yeah. let me just give my, my final thoughts and we'll call an end to this. So, okay. I was really stoked uh, to, when I heard uh, that this, this season uh, was a Bob Redemption uh, and we had a bunch of older uh, contestants on. Uh, um, I'm really happy that Sam won. I mean, I wanted them all to win. They all deserve to win. I really uh, admire the uh, fact that they have the guts to go on this show. Um, they all yes. have the skill. Uh, uh, um, uh, and, uh, yeah, I can't wait for the, the the next season. And definitely in about ten years, I'm doing that, edition, Erica, and we're gonna get you on that show <laughs> in about ten years. We should do like you know if they ever when they did the partner thing, I was like, oh, Cameron, I could go. Yeah. Oh wait, Cameron's allergic to fish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like that would be. Something, but they're never. I don't think they're ever going to do partners again, which is good because yeah. the show is alone. So. I, I really did. I really didn't like the the partner aspect of it because no, no, most people didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I guess let's let's uh, let's call it, Erica. Thank you so much for joining me and and discussing this. Thank you. This is I, great. I really think you should do more YouTube videos. You, <laughs> you're really smart. You're really astute. You have something. <laughs> 
I, I really want to do more videos. Um, <laughs> well, you should do more too. Thank you. Oh, you should do more too. <laughs> um, I want to thank the the guys for coming by. We got Brosef Russell, Sneaker Rooney, Triumph, for, and for anyone else out there who's lurking, thank you for watching our stream. Uh, maybe we'll do another one, you know, some other time. Yeah, totally. Uh, all right, guys. Have a good night. Take care. Bye, Terry. Bye, Cameron. Bye. <laughs>